All right, so we got every unique primary power explained by an Australian. Let's get to the video. G'day, guys and gals. What's up, brother? In your life, you will achieve many things. You will help people. You will make people laugh. True. Smile. True. Give them hope and give them meaning. True. And maybe, just maybe, one or two of you might even make a girl come. However, nothing you do in your life will ever even amount to the significance of a cum stain on a public toilet. It's been 20 seconds. Compared to the achievements of a Primark. Man, I can't, bro. About this? No, because they aren't real. But more importantly, they were born with slick special superpowers. Yeah. As we know, each Primark has their special Primark source. Stuff like super strength, intelligence, and willpower are the basic guidelines to make a demigod. Yeah, we know that. But Primarks are more than that, with each Primark having a number of their own little spicy powers that are completely unique to them. Some of these are pretty obvious like Magnus' war powers or Lehman's concerning obsession with wolves. However, others are a lot more subtle. Did you know that Fulgrim's regeneration is significantly faster than all the other Primarchs bar Vulcans? Bet you didn't know that, which means this video is valuable to you. Not that go. valuable, but still a little bit. So keep watching. Lads and lady, it's been an incredible year, and it's awesome to see that yeah. we have a great growth of momentum. But Arch needs to eat our dust up. And he's got to do it now. So if you laugh, smile, learn something new, or hope democracy prevails in Myanmar, then consider hitting that juicy red button. I have something yes, to be planned for when we overtake Arch that I know you'll like. Today we'll go over each of the Primarch's unique abilities. All right, let's go. Providing examples of when. The By the way, um, he used to totally start off with, with the Salamanders, you know, because we, we all know the Salamanders is like the best, like, Legion in the thing. So whoever's like Primarch it is, like, whoever's uh, Primarch. Uh, the side manners. I mean, I should be like the the side manners uh, pri uh, primark, but um, I'm just too busy, you know, making videos and stuff like that. But one day I will. They were used and how powerful those abilities were. We start with the side manners, though. To be honest, claimed half the primarchs. So Angron having demon wings or Fulgrim having like eight tits doesn't count. Let's get into Let's it. Let's get into Start it. Let's off with Primark number one because chronological order is a vibe. Side manners. We have the Lionel Johnson. Now, Mr. Johnson is a space knight, which is already awesome, but not necessarily a special power, even though all of his other powers kind of stem from that. Firstly, he's a god-tier swordsman and duelist, able okay. to fight without conscious thought. He can change sword swings mid-swing based on gut instinct, which is why he was able to beat Conrad Kirst in a fair duel, despite Conrad being able to see the future. So, oh, snap. So, is it basically like, um... Is it like Ultra Instinct, basically? Like the thing that Goku had in uh, Dragon Ball, how like he was able to just fight like just naturally and like not think about his attacks or whatever? Is that basically it? Is that like is that kind of like the same thing or not? Nah? Wow. What's so crazy is, and I, he just, like Major Kill literally just said it, he actually beat a guy that like saw the future. That's crazy. Uh, Conrad would foresee a downward slice, prepare to counter, then the lion's instinctual power would detect the counter before it happened, and it would change the slice to a sideways. That's hard. I'm mean, That's, that's hard. That's a chunk of deranged Batman. That's hard. Yeah, Conrad wasn't a huge fan of that ability. Whilst the lion isn't explicitly a psyker, his spirit is very prominent. It's very how you're doing. As he grew up in a chaos monster infested forest, where he hunted mutated demon beasts for fun, okay. he had grown extremely resistant to chaos. So much so that when Kairos Fate Weaver, who like knows everything, came to the lion to try to turn him to chaos, he realized that there was absolutely nothing he could say or do that would even make the lion hesitate. Then the lion fucked him up and sent him back to hell. Another example of the lion's obscene fortitude is when a million year old super psycho Xeno invaded his mind which is, you know, something it specializes in and has been training to do for a million years. However, the line was just... Oh, no, no, no. Oh, he was serious. I thought he was saying, like, a million as to just, like, some type of, like, funny metaphor or whatever. I, I didn't actually think that he was training for a million years. Bro, imagine, like, you train for something for a million years. You know how skilled you will be? Oh, my goodness. Bro, you train every single day for a million years at, like, one specific thing? Oh my god, bro, you're like the jack of all jack of all jacks. Like, that would be crazy. It would have fucked his to death with pure willpower. This enhanced spirit and willpower even allows the lion to maybe permakill demons, and it gives him more presence than even Horus. Loyalty is its own reward. Oh, okay. On to number two now. 
we have one of the missing Primarchs, whose superpower is his ability to play hide and seek. <laughs> Still haven't found him. Number three is everyone's <laughs> favorite, Pedo Snake. Okay, all right. So basically, if you guys don't know, that's like a dig towards like um like Primark Two, because we all know Primark Two and Primark Eleven. They're just GGs. Like they're, they're gone. They're just like we don't know what happened to them. There's been a lot of theories about like Primark Two and Primark Eleven, what happened to them and stuff like that. And obviously, he just made like a joke about that. So I, I'm listen. I know I'm a Warhammer new booty, but at the same time. I still listen. I know a little something, you know. I I'm I'm coming along. Fulgrim. Fulgrim's power was the fact that he was pretty. No, like I'm serious. Really? When he was found after crash landing on the planet, the people were like, "We cannot feed this boy. Let's not kill him." But then they were like, "Oh no, he's hot." Oh. So they let him live. Fulgrim doesn't have too many special abilities, which y you know shows. So he's just handsome. But okay. One thing people often overlook is his insane regeneration powers. Even compared to other Primarchs, like he gets shot in the eye with an extremely high caliber sniper rifle, something which would definitely kill or at least severely maim a lot of the other Primarchs. Okay. And he just kind of walks it off. Once when he was doing a ritual where he needed to have shit carved into his flesh, he had to focus on slowing down his healing factor because the carvings kept healing before the ritual could be finished. Mm. But yeah. Fulgrim's a fucking dipshit for picking up that sword. On to number four, we have Perturabo, who was given some uh, kind of shit superpowers that he resented a lot. Like, it seems as if the Emperor was just taking the piss here. Basically, Perti can always see the Eye of Terror, which sucks because it's not a nice thing to look at. Oh, no. Especially when he was young and didn't know what it was. It seemed like an evil god was staring at him all the time, which made him super paranoid. Another power, which seems good but kinda isn't, is that Purdy inherently understands almost everything. He can look at something and automatically figure out what it is, how it's made, and how it works, and how to improve it. That's kinda boring though, if you really think of it. I mean, well, here's the thing, right? I, I don't wanna say that's kinda boring, because at the end of the day, let's say, like, I think it would be cool at first, but then you're like, okay, then like, what's the point? Like, like, like where's the mystery? Like, where's the challenge? Like, where's the... Where's the learning process? Like, imagine you were born or whatever, and like the like you know you look at some things or whatever, and you automatically know what that thing is, how it works, how it functions, uh, how it's made, and stuff like that. I mean, that would be pretty cool in like a life or death situation, or um, or not even life uh, death situation, but like that would be cool uh, if like people would need that. But at the end of the day, I just feel like that would be like boring to the person because like everything, every literally every single thing that you like look at or whatever. I mean, well, then that would just, it would kind of just, like, give everything away in a way. Like, like, does that make sense to you? I don't know. Maybe I'm just, like, you know, just yapping at my butt. But I, I think that was just, I, I think that would make sense to me. Like, imagine, like, you know everything and, like, you constantly know everything. Everything you look at, you know literally everything. It, it would kind of, like, get a little boring. Maybe, maybe that's just me, but comment down below, man. How do you guys feel about that? There is no joy of discovery or learning for him. See? Oh, bye -bye. See? Another thing, which he added in himself, but will still count, is that he basically put a computer in his head, which allows him to view and play battles like an RTS game. The more I learn about Perturabo, the more I realize there is a Perturabo in all of us. Rather that than a Fulgrim in me. Normal 5 is Jagadai Khan. Other than being the token Asian, Jagadai is incredibly fast. Oh, this is the White Scars do, right? The White Scars Primark, or, or no? Like, he is the speed. He can tap into the speed force to go Super Saiyan speed in times of rage. Like, one time, one of his space friends died, and he got so mad that he began killing orcs so fast and viciously that the orcs weren't even enjoying it at all, and they wanted to run. That's right, the Khan was so fast that he made orcs dislike fighting. The Khan oh, wow. is also able to kill ghosts, which is, you know, a bit random, but it still counts. A That's kind of cool. Is that Jagadai is arguably the most reasonable out of all the Primarchs. Like when the heresy broke out and he listened to both sides' arguments, he was like, Traitors, I understand where you are coming from. Uh. Father is a dickhead of terror. <laughs> you guys are fighting for demons of hell. So I am not going to join you. That's probably the most reasonable way to look at it, in my okay. opinion. On to number six. I, I kind of like him. Okay, so he's reasonable. He can use his brain. I kind of like him. I, you know what? That might have to be my second favorite faction. I don't know. I might have to trade teams like Cameron Durant. We have the Lehman of Russ, the Wolf King, the man who howls unironically. Now, the obvious one here is the Canix Helix, which gives Russ increased savagery, heightened senses, sharper teeth, and huge resistance to the warp. 
like some space souls will allow themselves to become wolfen so that they can withstand huge amounts of chaos without falling. Whilst Russ is anti-Psyker, he can still tap into his spirit and communicate with the warp and scry using runes and other definitely not warp warp powers. Russ can also let out a warp disrupting howl, which he did so to Magnus in order to help overpower Magnus before fucking up his back. Oh Number wow. Seven gives Whoa. Us the rogueliest of dawns. Did he did what to his back? Powers doesn't make a Primarch better or more impactful. The fact that Dawn only has one subtle power, that being his ability to silence and push back the warp with his willpower, doesn't mean he is weaker than Perturabo, who has like four or five powers. In fact, it's the opposite. By Rogel not having innate OP powers, he has to work harder to improve himself, hence why he's a top tier swordsman, commander, and an all round dude, even compared to the rest of the Primarchs. On to number eight, we have Space Batman, with extra bats and no sense of morality or likability. Conrad Curse. Conrad is a good example of having too many powers, as it has literally broken his mind. He has an incredibly Wait, what? powerful precognitive ability, able to see events years in the future or mere seconds away. A downside to this is that his visions were harsh and they hurt his brain. As he got better at you. Oh. Like, bro, like, I know this game is like just straight dark, depression, evil, whatever. But at the end of the day, bro, like, uh, like, like, here's the thing, right? Some Primarchs do have, like, some useful, like, you know, powers or whatever. But imagine, like, your powers are, like, you know, seeing all of these, like, harsh and, like... But, like, listen. For example, imagine, like, my superpower was to see, like, you know, uh, these big major events happening in, like, real life or whatever. Bro, I mean, at that point, yeah, cool. I'll kind of be, like, a... I'll kind of be, like... I mean, well, to the human race, I'll probably be, like, like a prophet in a way. To a point where I could see, like, you know, it's different stuff in the future and stuff like that. But, bro, imagine, like, bro, imagine I see, like, World War Eight. Oh, my God. I mean, I'm, listen, I'm going to be dead by then. Well, I'm going to wish I'm going to be dead by then. But, brother, that would be, like, that would be horrific, bro. Like, for the, like for real. Like, and I would never. And this is what I'm saying. Like, people are like, oh, well, you know, uh, I can't wait to see the future. Brother, I'd be like, bro, bro, enjoy now, bro. Because what I see in the future, and I'm not kidding you. What I see in the future, bro, enjoy now, bro. Bro, play on your Xbox, PlayStation, whatever you got to do, bro. Enjoy now. Because in, the, <laughs> because in a few more years, oh, yeah, bro. You're you going to be playing with another gun. And I'm not talking about the one in Call of Duty. Yeah, real life. Yeah, bro. That's what I'm talking about. Bro, imagine, like, bro, imagine, like, that's my superpower. Like, I'll be, like, that's just depression. That's just sadness. I, like, oh, no, I can never. I legit can never. It also caused more damage to his sanity. He foresaw the Horus Heresy and the death of various Primarchs years ahead of time, and he could also use his power to time when to jump out of a ship so he wouldn't die. Another power of his is his stealth abilities. He can merge with shadows and become nearly invisible. Okay, see stuff like that, that's not bad. That's actually pretty cool. Like, you know, like the, like the uh, stealth stuff like that, uh, like the stealth, the, um, to the point where he can like uh, see stuff in the future, but also save himself or save other people. Like, that's cool, but then, like, there's always, like, a bad side to, like, those uh, powers and stuff like that. It's not as good as Korax's you know, stuff like that. but it's still decent, and it helps him pull off some gnarly ambushes. But, yeah, I'd take a working brain over that shit any day. Number nine is the Space Angel, who also had solid cognitive abilities, but he wasn't a whiny little bitch about it. Sanguinius. Now, before we get into Sanguinius, do I know side, him? Let's address the elephant in the room. Motherfucker has wings. He True. uses those wings to fly, but also kind of not. See, his wings, according to physics, are not enough to get him off the ground. Hence, he is flying using warp magic, and his wings are just there to make it not look weird. Hey, game works. Game works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Run my fade. As a matter of fact, bro, let me pull you to the side, bro. Run my fade right now. I'm going to be honest. Yo, bro, if I was sitting Gwinius, if, if I was this guy right here, bro, and you gave me wings and I can't use them, yo, game works. I'm going to be honest with you. Whoever made, whoever came up with this idea, whatever, bro, I'm going to pull you to the side, bro. We're going to have a fight. I'm going to be honest with you. That's nasty work. Imagine having wings, but you can't use them. That is diabolical work right there, bro. That, bro, that, that's the nastiest work I've ever seen in my life, bro. That, bro, bro, my build is totaled. Bro, I got wings, but I can't use them. I'm going to be honest with you. Game works. Whoever came up with the idea, bro, you owe me 30 seconds, bro. I'm going to be honest with you. His That's nasty work. What? slightly less powerful than Conrad's, but it doesn't scramble his brain. It works in a very similar way. Sanguinius foresaw his death well into the future, but he also foresaw that a duel that he was about to have with Curse could kill either of them, hence he didn't proceed with it. 
Another less known power of Sangi's was his ability to bend reality to his will in subtle ways. When his flagship is crashing and should be breaking up and exploding, he wills it to survive the crash and he basically holds the ship together through manifesting his desired reality. So he can do that, but he can't fly with his wings? Yo, game works. I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. Run my fade immediately. I can, bro, I can shape reality with my mind. I can basically manifest anything that I want in, into real life. But I can't fly like an eagle to the sea. I can't fly? Are you serious? Oh, no, that's nasty work. He's jewel with that's dirty work. Example. With my wings. I can't so fly with my wings. Jewel, and he accepted it as his fate. Hence, reality bent to make it happen. If he was like, nah, fuck that, then it's unlikely it would have happened. Number 10. The halfway there Primark is Ferris the Manus. Sadly, Ferris didn't get a whole lot of screen time because, you know, he got decapitated, but he still displayed some cool powers. His innate knowledge of forging and engineering was insane, and it only grew more powerful when he bashed up what could have been a Catan shard and absorbed its necrodermis into his arms and central nervous system. Yeah, the metal arms were pretty cool and they gave him a serious buff, but yeah, a bit of head choppy choppy kind of cuts but um, shh, his lore short. That Number was 11 so <laughs> is the other missing Primark, who is a master of where's Wally, except that he is Wally and it's this page. <laughs> <laughs> Number 12 is the angry Angron, who has nails in his fucking brain. Worst superpower ever. Originally, Ooh. Angron was an empath who could absorb and ease the sufferings of those around him, which he did to help his fellow gladiators sleep. But yeah, that ability... Wait, what? Wait a minute. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. So his power was absorbing the pain of his comrades so they can get some rest? I'm going to be honest with you. I commend that. I mean, listen, I'm going to be honest with you, brother. I would never do that. Listen, if I'm not hurting, y'all hurting, I'm sorry. Yo, take some painkillers. I'll see you guys in the morning. But I'm going to be honest with you. Clap it up to him. That You know what, man? That's a nice primary right there, man. I vanished when all he felt was suffering after getting the old brain nails. The brain nails also might have totally severed his connection to the warp making him lose any other potential Primark powers, oh. as well as making him lose his Primark aura, which is the thing that makes Space Marines shake in their boots whenever a Primark is nearby. Oh, wowzers. Yeah, the World Eaters fucking hated Angron. Number 13 is the big G-Man, Gilliman. The boy. The robot of Utes. The boy. Gilliman has, like, no superpowers. His strength, He's speed, a goat, though. combat ability, and commanding skills are all decent, but not abnormally powerful. What he does have, however, is some Mintas organization skills. And in a galaxy full of constant war and suffering, being organized gives you a huge edge over everyone else. What is Conrad's shadow stalking powers compared to Gilliman's ability to muster an armada within days? What is Jagadai's speed compared to a well-supplied and well-trained army? Each Primarch's abilities serve to make them a raid boss, whilst Gilliman's organizational abilities turns his armies into raid bosses. Just look at the effect Gilliman has had since returning that's, to that's the That's a scene. nice, like, helmet, During too, the with, the, with the green the leap. Uh, was to delay Gilliman green, like, design terror. leaps or whatever. The was never that's hard. To chaos or beat his armies because both of them weren't going to happen. On to number 14, we have Morty. That smelly piece of shit. <laughs> Morty was unusually tanky and could endure severe punishment. He also had an aura which gradually... But he looks kind of drippy, though. Look, he got the, he got the hood on. Yo, I got a question real quick, and I'm going to play the video. Real quick. Are there, like, real-life, like, uh, like Warhammer, like, suits and stuff like that? Like, do people, like, I've, I've never searched it out. I'll probably search it about this video. Um, But, like, have people, do people, like, you know, get dressed up in, like, you know, Warhammer, like, you know, um, like, armor and stuff like that? I kind of, I kind of wonder about that. I haven't looked at it. I'm, I'm probably looking up at this video, though. Awesome people. Are there some for sale? We were immune to exhaustion. For example, in his fight against the Khan, the Khan landed a lot more hits, but Morty was able to tank them whilst gradually wearing the Khan out. He can also endure significantly more poison and toxins than the other Primarchs, but at the cost of looking like an ugly ass motherfucker. He also had a surprisingly solid <laughs> stealth ability and could sneak past most people. And he was a psyker, but like, who cares? Number 15 is Big Red, Magnus the Big Red. Obviously, this dude's a wizard. Great wizard, oh, okay. shit listener. He can also change his size depending on the situation. Need to punch a titan to death? No worries. Needs to get through a low door frame? No worries. 
Another ability is wow. that his appearance changes depends how he's feeling. And he's not just the Psyker, he's literally made of the warp. Like when Lehman snapped his spine, he didn't put Magnus in a wheelchair or, physical dis or physically disable him. He broke his soul. Probably would have rather the wheelchair, but oh well. Number 16, we have the big man, Horace. I'd like to say that male I, pattern baldness is his power. Did did y'all see? Did y'all hear that pause? Was it was it the video? Or was that me? Uh, but it seems like half the Primarchs have it. Horus was a legendary warrior commander, but that isn't very special. What is special is his supernatural levels of charisma. After all, this dude convinced nine Primarchs, beings of supreme intellect, oh, as well as um, a ton you know of what? space rings, which are known for their genius IQs, to willingly sell their souls to the forces of hell and rebel against the Emperor for some crypt. Y'all sold y'all soul for a, a, a pack of ramen noodles and a bowl of Cheerios. That's crazy. That's absolute, bro, bro, bro. How did y'all, bro, y'all let Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Ben Diesel's kid convince y'all to sell y'all soul for a, a, a bag of Lay's chips, bro. For for a bag of, of potato chips. Th that's crazy to me, bro. Y'all, bro, y'all traded y'all soul away, bro, for, for, for a bag of salt and vinegar chips, bro. This is ridiculous. Bro, y'all traded y'all soul in for some Kool-Aid. This is crazy work. How did, bro, I couldn't even do that. I mean, bro, and I can do anything. Unconvincing reasons. Primark 17 is the kitty fiddler, Lorgar. Lorgar was and still is the runt of the litter, but he did develop some snazzy skills over time. He unlocked these psycho powers, which whilst they couldn't compare to Magnus's, still came in pretty hot. He too has some pretty significant charismatic powers, as he was able to convert multiple planets to a new religion in only a couple years. That charisma extends to his sons, who are unusually loyal to Lorgar, even for space marines. For example, when the traders rebelled, each trader legion had to cull about one third of their legion due to loyalty issues. Lorgar didn't have to do this. In fact, when he did cull a portion of his legion, it wasn't due to loyalty issues, it was because he just didn't like them that much. Primarch 18 is Vulcan, who is stacked. Vulcan is the biggest Primarch, and arguably the strongest. Yeah! He cannot die as he is a perpetual. Yeah! Vulcan has been killed in thousands of creative and over the top ways, and he's always regenerated. He's also a master craftsman and can make fucking wild shit that no one else can make, even if they were shown how to. Vulcan's greatest power, however, is that he is a good person. The Your Primarch can never. I'ma forever say this, you buck. Your Primark can never. Your pri you heard what he just said? You heard what he just said? His greatest superpower is being a great person. See, your Primark can never. See, your Primark is heartless and they're, all they're always going to fail. They're always going to fail. See this right here? Look at, the look at this. Bro, tall, dark, and handsome. He looks just like me. Let let let's replay what he just said uh, uh, about, about, the about the leader, about the GOAT. This, this is what he had to say. Bro, like I said yesterday, he still got the receipts on his armor just to show how much it cost. Come on, bro. Play it back over again, Major Kill. Arguably the strongest. He also can Arguably what? I say all what? I say y'all. He said arguably the what? Let's replay that one more time. Fuck 18 is Vulcan, who is stacked. Vulcan is the biggest Primarch. Biggest. The strongest. The strongest. You also cannot die. As Come on, bro. Bro, this man walks in a room, bro, swole, bro, moving people out the way. That's what he does. He's the strongest of them all. Bro, get right. Go get in the gym, bum. <laughs> you bum. Bro, listen, your Primarch can never. Sure. Vulcan has been killed in thousands of creative and over-the-top ways, and he's always regenerated. He's also a master craft. And look at the grills. Look at the grills. He out, oh, bro. My face cam is just. Oh my god, my face cam's in a way. But bro, if y'all could see this, y'all see this, this this lightning right here. This is coming from the grills of his of his totem podium that he got right here, bro. The bro, he's just flexing, bro, bro. Bro, he pulls up to the battlefield in Lamborghinis. And can make fucking wild shit that no one else can make, even if they were shown how to. Vulcan's greatest power, however, is that he is a good person. The Emperor was so proud of Vulcan to see that Vulcan maintained his humility when it seemed like all the other Primarchs had lost theirs. <laughs> Give this man a hug. Primarch 19. See, 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 see. Again, your Primarch can never see the Emperor. I bet the Emperor is, is smiling up and down whenever he whenever he sees the Salamander's uh the Salamander's Primarch. And that's just what it is. He says, bro, you're keeping your humility. You're strong. 
Bro, you bigger than everybody. You bigger than everybody else, bro. Every time you walk down a hallway, bro, the girls, bro, they suddenly they all turn around and look at you in unison. Bro, it is what it is, bro. Just because your part mark is ugly, it don't. I, bro, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you're not a part of our squad. It is what it is, bro. You pull up to the battlefield in scooters. You're not respected. What you talking about? You pull up to the battlefield with your engine with your engine outside your vehicle. Mine's is in my mine's is in the mine's is in the back. I got the Mickey D's in the front in the trunk because that's what type of cars we got. Your Primark can never. Is the Raven Raven Corvus Corax? Corvus is a spooky dude. With <laughs> he can straight up turn invisible even in broad daylight, and he uses his ability to survive the East Van Drop Site massacre. All right, all right. Corvus can also smell chaos. Ooh, he can smell chaos. Ooh, he's invisible. Okay. Corruption, as he killed a word bearer that was attached to his legion after detecting it within him. By far his coolest power, though, actually no, by far the coolest power out of all the Primarchs, is his ability to transform into a gigantic shadow demon and wreck... What, what did you say? Major Kill, what did you say? By far his coolest power though, actually no, by far the coolest power out of all the Primarchs, is his ability to transform into a gigantic shadow demon and wreck everyone's shit. One of the last times we see Corvus, he beats the shit out of Lorgar, again, by using this demonic shadow raven form and by God, I'd love to see a tabletop model of it one day. Fuck it, maybe I'll just get one made. I'll call it Raven Raven. And finally, number 20, Alpharis and Amigon. Other than their ability to scramble my brain whenever I think about them, these dudes can give their blood to their sons. This greatly empowers their son, and it makes them think that they are Alpharius, hence why Alpharius seems to have died like 10 times now. These Primarchs can also hide their Primarch aura and blend it with normal speed. Boohoo, lame. Other than that, man, hopefully, guys, uh, enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to. You, you want me to finish it off? Space Marines. Alpharius was present for most of the Emperor's meetings with each Primarch, but he was able to go unnoticed in the crowd. It's funny to think that as all the Primarchs come from the Emperor's DNA, hence the Biggie has access to all of their powers. OP is shit. If you enjoyed the video and you shout out to Major Kill, man. Other than that, man, hopefully you guys enjoyed this, man. I, but yo, know, Major Kill, bro, man, you hit it right on the nose whenever you're talking about the Salamander, uh, the Salamander's Prime Merc, um, the the biggest, huh, um, the strongest. Um, the Emperor just looks at the at the Salamander's uh Prime Merc with just pride, with just he's so proud of him. He's so proud of him. I mean. Like I said before, it is what it is. I mean, bro, whenever you're, whenever you're talk, when I, I said, oh, whenever you're talk, oh, whenever you're tall, dark and handsome, and like you know, you're big and you're intimidating, you know, to the enemies, but at the same time, you look like a million dollars, you know, you know, to, to the girls and stuff like that. You know, you pull up in the Lamborghini to the battlefield. You know, you got the tr you got you got you got the engine in the back, the trunk in the front, um, and that's just what it is, you know, um. I mean, I mean, what else can you ask for? You know, like what what else? How much could you ask for? You know, because if I'm being honest with you, I mean, bro, it's kind of illegal to be that cool. It's illegal to be that to be that nice. As a matter of fact, I think the leader of the uh, I think the leader uh, um, of the Salamanders, because you guys know I'm the lieutenant. I think the leader. Um, I, I believe he has a Corvette. You know, he pulls up to the to the battlefield. I think I got a uh, hmm, what what car? I got? Oh, I got the G wagon. Um, we all pull up to the battlefield in unison. We all get out. We we close our doors, and then we walk up to the enemies in slow motion while there's while while all of our cars are exploding in the background. I mean, we, obviously, you know, we're gonna buy more of them, um, but that's just what we do. You know, we come through. You know, we came, we saw, we conquered. I mean, that's just what it is. Uh, there's nobody like us. There will never be anybody like us. Uh, your Primark, he he's a bum. He's going out of style. He was relevant what 20 years ago. He's not that guy anymore. Um, as a matter of fact, your Primark is lost long brother. He's in a coma. He's never coming back. Um, and, and that's how great we are. Your Primark can literally never. Your Primark is, is, I, bro, is going out bad, going out sad right now. Your Primark is suffering right now. Um, mine literally can never. Because um, that's what we do. Um, simple as that. 
The only people that come close to us is what the Space Marines. You know, Titus, he's the goat. Uh, you know, they got they got the G Man over there. You know, they're a threat. But 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 you know, they like us and we like them. You know, we're kind of a team. Um, but that's just what it is. You know, all of you other Primarchs, y'all got these little dark colors or whatever. You're not intimidating. As a matter of fact, half of y'all are just bums. Um, other than that, man, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel. Um, so all the Salamander, you know, um, you know, squad members out there, unite in the comment section down below. Um, just know I'm here. So if anybody wants to hate or whatever, just ignore them. Uh, we're going to let them and their Primarch just suffer. Uh, in a uh, in a dark alone, you know those boys need a nightlight, um, and it is what it is. Make sure you guys again like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you later. Thanks, Mount, and peace out.